should be live. Welcome everyone to today's live stream. I'm working on a Lego Creator set that I've already determined, even before I finished it, which we're going to do today, that it's the best Creator set of 2024 so far. That being said, it's April, so we have a ways to go, but this is the Wild Safari Animal set. And the build that I'm most interested in, of course, is the giraffe. I think it's glorious. I have most of it done. I've been working on this as like a little, little side thing, I guess, in the background. And here it is. All he needs, or she, maybe, are two front legs. So that's what we're going to be finishing today. And I'm excited to have this thing done. You can kind of see it a little bit there. They did a great job with the design on this as its tail falls off. Terrible job with the, the design on the tail. The tail falls off pretty easily. Look at the face, though. I love Lego Creator. I feel like it's an underappreciated theme. There's actually a little ladybug on this that blends in so well. Can I get a shot of that? I think it really adds to the set. Can you see it right there in like the hip? I think it's lovely. Blends right in. Can we find a new home for you, my friend? Can we take you outside? Let me see. I mean, can we pull this leg off? <laughs> this is gonna get dangerous. There you go. I've had this build going on so long there's insects living on it. What the heck? I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go like like that outside, and we'll see if it takes flight, and or just go somewhere else because it doesn't need to be here. That did not work. Okay. I had to give it some encouragement. A little uh, pew kind of worked. Also, I noticed while I was out there, it reminded me we should have microphone on. Tell me how different this is when I turn it on. Does that sound a little better now? You're listening to the cool sounds of Greg as he builds a Lego giraffe. There it is. So let's put that leg back on. We've taken off our uninvited guests. This is like Animal Kingdom, and that's why I love this set. You might be thinking, Greg, it's Disney week. What the heck are you doing building a Lego Creator set? Well, this reminds me of Animal Kingdom Lodge when we stayed there and when we went to Disney the last time. And when I look at this, that's what I think of. So I want to look at this on display, and this will be going on display here in the studio. I'm getting into Lego animals uh, quite heavily lately. It's just, I love animals in real life. I love Lego animals, so I've been buying them, and I'm going to be building them. We have the insects as well. I've got the camera that I need to build. That was like my first, and was it my only Lego haul from actual Lego this year? I'm way off pace, I suppose. They just haven't been coming with the gift of purchases that have been appealing to me. So... Uh, we'll get around to it eventually, I guess. Hopefully they come around. Speaking of get around to things, Megan says, send the notification for this, but I can't listen since I'm at work. It's nap time for my class. Listen later. Hey, it'll be here later for you. You won't be able to be a part of the conversation, but you're here in spirit, and that's all that really matters. I'm only building two Lego giraffe legs, so you're not going to miss much. Or will you? You might miss everything. This may feel a little repetitious, the other legs, obviously, like mirrors of each other. It doesn't have any feet either, so I imagine we're putting some feet on in this bag. But I want to say hello to everybody that's tuning in live. The giraffe has no good way to sit right now. It's kind of... I'll see if I can position it there. He's been, he's been bad. I put him in the corner like the dunce. So... Where was I here? I, I'm getting completely sidetracked. First time. Keep a count. We'll keep the, the count alive. How many times does Greg get sidetracked in a build? Often, many, lots, you could say. I'm terrible at multitasking, but then I read this thing online that made me feel better, and it said no one's good at multitasking. People that say they're good at multitasking, they're just not doing anything very well. And I'm like, okay, I appreciate that. Because that's how I feel when I'm trying to do mobile things, like right now, for example. I feel like, oh, shoot, I'm, I'm sucking at everything that I do. And maybe that's a just a normal thing to think, but... That's sometimes how it feels when you're live streaming. I do it anyway, because I enjoy it. And my goal here, depending on yard sale season and how that goes, which is looking hopefully uh, pretty busy as we get into the spring and summer, I'm going to try to do a little live stream every day. I'm going to try to cap it at 30 minutes so things don't get out of hand. That being said, the last couple days I've, the last couple times I've gone on a little, little longer than that. So we've got to find a way to kind of keep that at a, at a, a, a level that's acceptable that doesn't get me too burnt out on live streaming. That way we all win, right? Like it's a little bit, a uh, little bit for you to watch. Because my goal is to have something that, like, uh, 
this isn't, uh, it's going to sound nefarious or something, I, I guess, but it's like, I'd like to have my, my streams be a part of someone's schedule. I like having things that I can look forward to and like when they're released. And if there was a live stream every day that whenever you see it, not many people can watch them live because I stream at like weird times in the afternoon and maybe one of these days in the morning, we'll get the morning gang going. They're a feisty bunch. Um, it gives you a little something to, to, to tune into or to watch before you go to sleep or just to hang out, listen to, watch, whatever you do with live streams. I don't know. I'm not here to judge, but um, it, it's just a little something. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I started my, what was I calling my, my th three throng approach to Lego YouTube yesterday, where I started doing a, my week in Lego. And that's going really well. I've been like editing that as I've been going. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a great video for the folks that wanna watch like a regular video. I've been doing the live streams and then I make little shorts showing what I accomplished that day, whether it be on a stream or outside of that. And I'm like, this is how you do it, right? Cause it's like, everyone has different tastes and it's a little something for everyone. I talked about this a little bit yesterday. And, I, and so the end of the week, there'll be a, a video documenting my entire week, my week in Lego. Obviously, as you're here right now or watching this in the future, if you're from the future, you can see that I'm doing streams. And then the shorts are like just sitting there for, for people that just want the, like I, I missed, I didn't, I don't want to spend an hour with you, Greg. That's too much for me to bear. Can you tell me in 57 seconds what you accomplished today? I can. I really have to speed run it. <laughs> Yesterday I made my video. Hey, Ray, welcome. I... I made my short and it was like an one minute and seven seconds long. And I was like, I, there's nothing to cut. This YouTube one minute thing is killing me. So I had to like reshoot the last uh, like 20 seconds of it. And I made it eight seconds. I just kind of cut the fluff and I just got right to the point. And I guess that's what they want. Right? So I did it and made it 57 seconds long, I uploaded it. And when you know it, of all the things that, I, that I've done, the short seems to be the thing that has generated the most interest, the most views, the most subscribers. Like it's, it's a way for new people to find the channel, which is fantastic. And if this is something that I wanna do long-term and obviously something I enjoy, I think it's, it's smart to take advantage of all the different avenues that you can take advantage of. So if you're thinking about starting a channel, I'd say do whatever you like the most. For me, like I, I feel most comfortable, I think, doing live streams, even though it may not seem that way. I, there's something that about just kind of turning the the device on and just letting it roll. There's no take backs, there's no redos, there's no striving for perfection. It's just, just do your thing. And I like that a lot. I like the spontaneous nature of it. And I, as you can probably tell, I like to, to jabber on about things. So the live streams work well for me. The YouTube shorts challenge me to condense everything that I want to say somehow into a minute. And then the regular videos is just kind of my bread and butter. That's just what I've always done. So that's, that's like a piece of cake for me, but it's fun. Like kind of getting into these different uh, avenues. And also I, I just thought of this today too. I should be posting my shorts in other places too, like Instagram and TikTok. That's like the biggest bang for your buck. If you're thinking about getting started, that's what I would say in, in 2024, if you're thinking about starting a channel on literally anything, any articulation of the leg, no, it does move though. Um, I would say make content that's less than a minute long, film it vertically and post to YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. All the birds with one stone. That's what I would do if I was starting out right now. That being said, the only way to actually make money in doing this is to make regular YouTube videos. So that, you know, that could, that advice may not be good long term, but you might develop a bit of an audience doing it that way. Or just a bunch of people with no attention spans that like short form content. Maybe they're one and the same. I don't know. Hey Janelle, welcome to the stream. I see her. She's all, she loves the long form videos. I know. You and me same. This is something I would just sit down and chill to. But I don't know. I like to, in my mind, looking at the youth, I guess the people that primarily would watch Lego content, it seems as though they probably do want short form content. But I read this thing that said that people are hungry for longer form now. They're tired of these over edited, ridiculous videos that all the eight year olds seem to love. 
And people just want something that, that like this, I guess, that's more just mellow and doesn't feel like it's in your face and going to explode at any second. And that's a good thing for me because that's the kind of content that I like. Even my shorts aren't even like that. Like I see other people's shorts and it's like, boom, pow, pow, like text on the screen going nuts. You, I'm sure you've seen it. And mine's just kind of like, if it just feels like I, I shrunk into a minute. And I like it. DB says, variety is the spice of life. I love that phrase. It says, as they say, doing a bit of everything is very rarely a bad thing. What I like to say, DB, is that I am a jack of all trades, but master of none. Have you ever heard that phrase? Is that, is that even a phrase that anyone says anymore? Might be dating myself there, but jack of all trades, master of none. It means that you are, you're okay at a lot of stuff, but not good at any one thing. Unfortunately, the world that we live in seems to want things and people that are really good at one thing. I've just never been that. I have too many interests to just do one thing. Like, for example, in the Lego space, since that's where we're here, right? If you just do one thing, like if all you do is, uh, let's pick one, one uh, genre, let's say unboxings. All you do is Lego unboxings. You never show a set that you built, you never show yourself sorting, you never show yourself building, you never do anything but unbox Lego sets. You're gonna be really successful probably because people that love Lego unboxings and they exist, they're gonna find your channel and they're gonna love the unboxings, right? Now, if you're a guy or girl, anybody, that say you do a Lego unboxing and then someone finds it and you're like, oh my gosh, I love Lego unboxings and they subscribe, but then you're like me and you love doing all kinds of other stuff in Lego, like uh, doing a review maybe, for example, I'm just throwing things out there. That unboxing person is all of a sudden like, I'm not really interested in reviews. I didn't come here for the reviews. I came here for the unboxings and then they're going to be disappointed. <laughs> right. Or, um, I, I guess I can maybe uh, describe this better on my vlog channel because we do so much there. Like we do travel videos. We've done Thomas videos. People have found us through RC stuff that we've done, radio remote control cars and things like that. And it's like, they find us and they see this whole playlist of stuff and they love that. But then it's like, I'm not just, I'm just not one dimensional. I, lo I love all things that we do and I share everything. So it can be challenging to find, to find an audience that likes to tolerate everything you do, which is why I think the only reason that I've strived or th thrived on this Lego channel is because it's never really been about the builds or the sets or anything like that. It's about personality. It's about making it personal. And I would venture to say that Maybe we have one of the most personal channels in the Lego space. Not that I've watched every channel, but you know, most people that it's, it's informational. I like to keep ours kind of maybe more entertainment based, but there's a front leg for the draft. Someone asked about articulation. No, no, nothing there. It, you can move it like that. I don't know how much uh, knee articulation a, a giraffe needs to have necessarily, <laughs> but this one has none. Can we get it to stand now that it has three legs? Yeah, almost, almost perfect. Let's go on to the fourth leg, the fourth and final leg. If you haven't seen this so far, I guess you can see it right there. I'm looking at my, my shot. It hurts to see the vlogs missing Phantasmic. I know, I made a pledge that we're gonna go next time. This time, dude, it was, the crowds were just putting us back. We should have went in May. I didn't even know what was going on in May. We were at the ice cream place in Disney World and all these people were going to this thing and I was like, I wonder what they're all going to. This time we knew it was fantastic and I've heard nothing but good things, but I love the fact that we have incentives to go back again, right? I want to go see, I want to see Fantasmic. I of course want to ride Tron, but the next time I go to Disney, when we go again, I'm absolutely going during a dead time. I think the two best times to go to Disney, if you're going to go, are from what I've seen, the middle of May, that's when we went last year. They offered us a discount for going, flights were insanely cheap. Like right now, I think I could schedule a flight in May to go to Orlando, Florida from Philadelphia. Round trip, $79. $79 round trip flight, like no one's there. And then the other great time to go is right after kids go back to school, like in September. Still kind of warm down there, maybe a little too warm, but ghost town. The problem is that that schedule works for me but it doesn't work for the people in my family that are school bound. 
So uh, like in May, the reason no one goes in May is because they're all looking forward to coming during like the summertime when everyone's off. And then no one goes in September because they just came in the summertime when everyone is off. So that's the time to go. Yeah, late May though, I, I know that uh, when you start going in, into May, it starts getting a little hot down there for my liking. I complain about Pennsylvania winters and how cold it is, but once you're in Florida and it starts getting above 85 degrees and like 87 degrees, 90 degrees, that's just too much for me, man. I'm just miserable there. I think the best time personally that we've gone, like in terms of weather, it was probably like going in, in like January because then it's, it's nice. Like you wear a sweatshirt in the morning because it's a little brisk, but then you take your sweatshirt off and the rest of the day is just perfection. Like <laughs> Orlando in, in January is like Pennsylvania at its peak of June. Just perfection. It's like the greatest weather you can imagine. And we even got some swimming in here and there. My other regret of things that I didn't do in Disney since we're on that topic, I didn't ride Splash Mountain the times that we were there. It was, it was always like kind of like too cold. And I was, I didn't want to get wet because it was January. So that's one bad thing. I don't know if I'd ride Cali River Rapids during the, the cold times either. So yeah, you got to give and take, but I, I just, I don't like the heat because it's hard to escape. Whereas if it's, if it's cool, you just put a sweatshirt on or a hoodie or whatever, and you're fine. The heat, unavoidable. The only thing you can do is buy $6 Icy's from Disney and uh, uh, bear it. Or find a ride that's air conditioned. Go inside somewhere. Always a possibility. But it's eh, not so great. And Clark Man doesn't do well in the heat either. He's not. He doesn't love it. I think I messed something up here. I've got this all kinds of screwed up, I think. What have I done? I've got to put something else on here. Hey, Ray, welcome. I just missed the new missions on Star Tours. Did they change it? I had no idea what Star Tours was before. And... Um, it, to me, I, I thought it was just some whack ride because it never had any kind of weight on it. So I'm like, oh, this must be stupid. And then we rode it and it's like, oh, it's pretty cool. So I didn't really miss anything because I, I've i never experienced it. You know what I mean? Like had I done the new one, I guess, I would have missed the old one, right? So you don't really miss things. You just don't have the opportunity to do the old or new thing. But we have a pretty good time. This time it was, we knew going into our trip that it was going to be absolutely insane there. And I went there knowing that I wasn't going to ride the number of rides that we've done before. In fact, I th I'd say we rode about a quarter of the rides that we've done before. And this time we were just like, okay, we're just going to go and enjoy the experience. And that's what we did. Like if you watch the last day of our trip, we, um, we kind of just walked around and hung out and had fun as opposed to standing in line for, for two hours. It's weird how, it, from the comments that I've read, it's weird how people use that like a badge of honor. Like I waited two hours to get on this ride and I'm just like, it's two hours of your life. Like if you can watch Toy Story in less time than it takes to get on Slinky Dog Dash, that's a problem, I feel like. Like at least to me. But I come from an amusement park that has free admission, free parking, Wait times at the longest are like you wait for 15 minutes for a roller coaster to, to load through a few times. It's just completely different from Disney. Disney has this fandom that is that is beyond measure. And people, like, it is it is like a religion. So, you know, if you're okay with that and and you understand that going in, it's fine. But otherwise, you're, you may be disappointed when you go there and see how just how busy it is. On a similar note, speaking of how busy it is... I was talking to Mrs. Brickitect about the prices they charge, and I'm like, you know, they could probably, and I hope they don't hear this, they could double the prices of admission there, and I don't think it would have any impact on the number of people in the park. I think if a ticket went from $200 a day to $400 a day, people would just pay it. These adult Disney people are crazy. They're obsessed. And there, there must be some nostalgia there or something. I never went as a kid, unfortunately. I would have lost my mind. But going there as an adult, like it's, it's, it's a huge expense. I think it's awesome to be able to give Clark that experience. But man, the, the amount of money that people are willing to spend to go there on everything is, is mind boggling. And the number of people that are there is mind boggling. 
And I'm just like, dang, they could really go crazy. But I saw this thing, it was on Reddit, showing like the price of things in 1997. And the, I don't know what Disneyland costs. I imagine it's probably in line with Disney World, if not more, because it's in California. But a Disneyland ticket in 1997, I think, they, I think it was for an adult, $27. To put that in perspective, a Disney World ticket at the peak of Easter vacation... When I looked at the, the chart or whatever, if you went just for the day, you walked in there and bought a ticket, it was like $250. So, you know, inflation's been a thing for the last 30 years. I understand that. But 10 times, 10 times the price, and people are still lining up and happy to go there, and that's us. I, I'll tell you this, every time that we leave Disney, I feel absolutely fleeced. I feel like I got reamed, ripped off, whatever you want to say. Like, I feel like Walt Disney took advantage of me. But then some time goes by and you're like, boy, I really miss the vibes there. That's such a fun place to be. And then you like start contemplating it. You watch some people that frequent Disney in their vlogs or whatever, and you just get that, that itch to go back. And it's, they just get you again. And I know going into it, I'm like, we're going to get ripped off again. Like everything's going to be wildly expensive. And we go, and we do it again. So that's my very long review of what it's like being, a, I guess, a Disney fan. And we're not even, like, hardcore as, like, most of these people are. It's just that's, that's the experience there. I think it's something that people should experience. I think probably going there once in your life probably is enough. And if, if you don't have parents that can go there or can afford it, that was the boat that I was in. So as an adult, maybe it's even worse because then you're making up for lost time. And I'm like, you know what? Now that I'm an adult and I've got the money and the ability to do this stuff, I'm going to do it, you know? And, uh, yeah, I've just been doing it. I've been thinking about life that way for ever since COVID happened. It's like when we didn't have the opportunity to do things, now it's like, you know what? If we have the opportunity, we're going to take advantage of it because you just never know. And I talk about that in my podcast, Missing Pieces. Make sure you're subscribed. It's linked down below. If you like this, it's like a podcast that happens every single week. I'll probably be talking about you in it, maybe. Phantom says adult Disney people are just weird to me. Yeah, they can be. Uh, it's almost like the parks are more meant for adults than kids these days, honestly. Xander says, part of Disney is the vibes. Being at Disney World feels different than any other amusement park. Yeah, it's a real... Uh, it just feels like another, a whole new world. <laughs> in the words of Aladdin. Janelle says, she only went to Disney once in 1991, after the Gulf War. Disney had a two-day, one night for all military families who had a parent in the war. The funny thing is, if you went in 1991, it was probably like $12.50 to get in. It wouldn't even have been a thing. Now, oh, I think we're done for a while, though. I say that. Well, th three months later. Hey, we're back at Disney. I, another thing is, like, I, I can't make the videos anymore. <laughs> I feel like every time I go there, I, I'm making the, the same videos, like documenting our trip. And I'm like, are people going to watch this? And it's surprising the amount of people that really do enjoy it. I thought we'd get some flack on it, you know, when you go, when you go that much or when, when you do anything online, like you see all the Lego and stuff that we get and all the fun we have. There's people that come out of the woodwork and say, oh, Clark man spoiled and all this stuff. And you expect some, some haters to come out. Like, there is, there's a level of jealousy that sometimes people have. And it's unfortunate that you can't just be excited for somebody and you got to, like, t t like bring them down with you or whatever the case is. But it uh, didn't really have that. It's just, like, people are uh, people generally seem to be happy for us. And I think that's pretty darn cool. I think the only time that kind of happens, maybe people silently think it, but the only time that it comes out in the comments is from, from little kids, usually. That kind of, they maybe wish they had that life, and I wish I could give them that life, but it's expensive enough having one kid, guys. Here's our here's our giraffe. Our Animal Kingdom giraffe is what I'm calling it because it's still Disney week slash month slash times. So our giraffe is the official Animal Kingdom mascot. Check out the the backwards feet there. I like that. It's pretty cool. I couldn't imagine building something like this. Like if if I worked at Lego and they came to me and they're like, Greg, it's time for you to shine. Make us a giraffe. I'd be like, I'd be like, let me get the yellow pieces out, get some brown in there. We'll, we'll, we'll build them up with bricks. It'd be so bad. 
Mm -mm. Hey, Mahan's here. Blast from the past. Thanks for tuning in. You haven't missed anything since you've been gone. I've just been building this giraffe the whole time. But I'm glad you're back. I gotta put some feet on him. That's what we're doing next. Let me move him out of the way so you guys can see the, the build. I only got a few pieces left. New piece alert. Don't have that in our collection. It's like a, a slopity, upward slopity with a plate attached to it. I don't have that one. Every time I say something like that, I, I do it just to be funny because Mrs. Brickitech, back when I got into Lego again as an adult, one of the first things we did was build an advent calendar. And every time I would open one of those, the pieces had changed so much in 20 years or whatever since I did my last Lego thing in the late 90s or mid 90s. And I was like, oh, I don't have that piece in my collection. And I would say that like every single day, not on purpose, but just like because I was excited about it. And she got so annoyed with me saying it that it became a thing. So now I, when I say, I don't have that piece in my collection, that's where I, my mind always goes back to that. Or when I see a new piece like that, or a new element, or whatever you want to call it, I'm just like, I don't have that in my collection. So you can start saying that too. You can make that a thing for yourself. You could say it to yourself even. You could annoy yourself. Barth Vader says, we are Disney timeshare owners twice over. We love going every year. Is that the Disney Vacation Club? They always ask about that. And I looked into Disney Vacation Club. And by the number of times that we've gone there so far, it might have paid off for us to join. But I'm like hesitant to commit to something like that. I think the way that Disney Vacation Club works, if I understand it correctly, is that you pay a, a large sum of money and, and like kind of like buy into the, di to the Disney experience. And then it gives you the right, sort of like a timeshare, maybe it's the same thing, where you get to go, you get so many points to use where you can go each year and use those points. So you can buy a lot of points and go like two weeks out of the year, you can buy a few points, go a couple days, uh, depending on how many family members you have or what hotel or resort you wanna stay at, you can kind of buy into it. But the beauty of it is, say you spend, and I think it's big money, like let's say uh, like 50K, right? So you put $50,000 on this, and I'm just making these numbers up. That would allow you to go to Disney uh, one week a year, every year for like the rest of your life, let's say. But the problem with it is, and what I've learned, is that there's also like other fees. Like you have to pay like these, uh, these kind of like membership fees. They don't call them that, but they're, 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 like, they're like these yearly nagging fees that hit you all the time. And I'm like, you know, it would be cool to kind of like get a deal because over time it's going to pay itself off, right? If you're, if you're planning to go there. But then I think about, and maybe this is foolish to think, but I feel like once Clark Man grows up and we kind of get this, all this out of our system, and I say this every time we leave, as I mentioned before, it's like, are we going to keep going there? Are we going to keep, am I going to be at Disney every single year when I'm 50 years old, when I'm 60 years old, while I still want to be at Disney? And maybe, I, maybe I will. And maybe I should have, like, knowing what I know now and the money that we've already spent, I kind of wish I would have just did that right from the rip. Before we ever walked in the place, I should have just bought into the Disney Vacation Club. And by now, I, I, we might have equaled out. It might, it might, like, uh, it might be profitable next, next year for us to go, or whatever the case is. Uh, he says, yeah, it's definitely paid off. They sold us on it essentially by prepaying for vacations. And I guess you, I, I think there's some value in it, too. Again, I'm coming from this from a place of just reading about it on Reddit, so I know very little, but I would assume that, say there did come a time where you're like, I'm kind of kind of over it, you know, like my kid's grown up, I've ridden It's a Small World as many times as I could possibly ride it without going insane, I think I'm done. I would assume that there's some residual value there that you could sell the next 50 years of your Disney experience to somebody else for a, a reduced cost or something, I don't know could be worth looking into. But at this point, I, I don't know. I've already spent so much money, I feel, like, I feel like I'd be getting robbed all over again. So I don't know. How'd this whole stream come, become about Disney, you ask? Well, it's Disney week, don't you know? I might just make it Disney week permanently. I do have some, one other Disney thing to get into as we put the giraffe's feet on here. You guys like the Disney talk or too much? I think it'd be interesting. Like if I had never been there and someone was someone had some experience in it, I'd be interested in hearing what they have to say. Just know, like, if you go there, it's going to be very tempting to go back again, so brace yourself. Speaking of bracing yourself, 
The giraffe no longer needs to brace itself because it's got feet and we've reached the end of the build. But it's not the end of the stream, or is it? What, how deep are we into this? 30 minutes on the dot. Are we going overtime today, boys? Let's do it. Let's build... Let's build a flamingo real quick. I'm not building the tree. Lego trees and me do not get along. I just want to build a flamingo because it's another Lego animal. Let me move this guy back so you can see him a little better. We got it done. We hit our time limit, but I'm going to go overtime today. As I do every day. I think 30 minutes is, is it needs to be the time. Because otherwise, I'm going to be like, oh my God. I live stream 48 hours. I think it's a little different when you're doing something like uh, playing video games. You know, these gamers, they, I've seen people stream for like eight hours straight. But that's a little different because you're kind of like engaged in something. This is like holding down the fort, doing a Lego stream like this where you're just chatting about Disney stuff. Resale market is wild right now. We could sell one of our contracts and make 50%. So you can make half your money back. Is that what you mean? Or make 50% more? Yeah, I mean, based on everything that I've seen, all things Disney seems to be the case. But good for you guys, that's pretty cool. Maybe one day we'll join the club. He's like, here's my affiliate link. Make sure you uh, use code BARTH when you sign up. I would like, oh man, he got me. He's like, let me tell you how amazing it is. I see, uh, I could see that happening. Just kidding, of course. I'm making sure I build my flamingo right. Here's the start of our flamingo. If you want to see what he looks like, he's on the front here. Very small. Rather flamingo-like, though. How they do the legs. I think the legs are looking good. That's the most important part if you're going to make a flamingo. you got to make its legs proper. Yeah, dude, like, I guess my, my dream is, and maybe this is everyone's dream, and I can just imagine what the real estate market is down in Florida. Find a place near Orlando that's within driving distance of Disney and buy that place. I, 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 I can't imagine that would be cheap because I'm sure everyone has, has this dream. But have that as like a, uh, a winter home, if you will. And then we could say that's our permanent residence, become a Florida resident instead of Pennsylvania. I would save on state income tax because Florida doesn't pay state income tax which would be great as a self-employed content creator. The weather would be lovely down there when we go in the wintertime, and then we come up here during the summer. If I had it my way, though, I would just I would just move down there permanently. I think, like, I was talking to Mrs. Brickitect about this. Like, obviously, we have ties to Pennsylvania, and this is where we've always lived, and this is where our family is, and our friends, and all that stuff, right? But, like, winters here suck. <laughs> they really do. And... I would love, I, like, I think the only months that Pennsylvania would pay out versus Florida would be probably the months of, like, June, July, August, September. I think those months, Pennsylvania rules. October, November, December, January, February, March, I'd prefer to be in Florida. And if it was just me by myself, no ties, no nothing, because I could do the... I, I'm in my basement building a Lego set right now. I could do this in any basement or any any house for that matter. Pens or Florida people don't have basements. I was once told that that's common knowledge by Ryan. I, it wasn't common knowledge to me at the time. I was like, I, I didn't know that. I guess it, what, you wouldn't want to have a basement in a land that's made entirely of swamps. So I think I'd, I think living down there would be pretty darn sweet. Because, like, I'd get all that wintertime back and it'd be nice and warm and lovely. How was, How are they even putting this on? Please hold. Am I messing my flamingo build up here? Probably. All right, that's going like that. This is sitting here. Oh, okay. Make sure I build this all right. But I think, like, all that wintertime that just completely sucks to live in Pennsylvania when it's cold, dark, miserable, I could get all that time back. And I'd be happy, I think. You go outside, it'd be lovely outside. But then summertime, I'd have to just bunker down in, indoors if I was down there the whole time. What do you guys think? 
May 1st looks a little too good this year for Star Wars. I'll have to look at it. I watched Ryan's video where he was showing off some of the stuff. I like those episode one brickheads. I'm trying to avoid the whole brickhead thing. Toy Adventure Expedition says, my wife and I got trapped with a timeshare deal when we went to Florida. We only went for the gift cards, but it did help us with the Disney trip. We got trapped. Did you actually like buy in? Because I know they do that where they're like, oh, come come join us and we'll give you like a free meal or we'll give you coupons or whatever. And then they, they don't take no for an answer, supposedly. That DB's right. He says, if you bought somewhere near Disney, you wouldn't be near Knobles anymore. We all know Knobles is better than Disney any day of the week. Pennsylvania has its perks. It's a beautiful area, free of natural disasters for the most part. Uh, it's just those winter months. If I could just escape, like if I could leave from January through March, we'd be good to go. I'd settle for that. Mark says, hey, Greg, how you doing? Thanks for the great vids of the Disney trip. Really enjoyed them. Hey, we're, we were just talking about that, actually. I'm glad you enjoyed them. I enjoyed having the experience. I didn't enjoy editing them, though. That was... Every one of those videos was about, and I talked about this on the cast, but it was about three hours, two and a half to three hours of footage every day I was recording, just like recording everything we we're doing. And then like editing those videos was taking me like six hours to make one of those videos. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I should, I should just switch my style up and be like, Hit the record button, be like, hey, we're in Disney, look around, all these cool things are happening, okay, bye. But no, I like to I like to make it feel like when someone watches one of our vacation vids, I want it to feel like you're right there along. I save you all the wait times, I save you all of the commuting, I save you all of the boring stuff, and you just get to see the highlights. And if you watch like the whole playlist, my ultimate goal is for you to feel like you you went on vacation with us including like on the roller coasters where I film our experience on those. So it's, it's pretty cool. I like doing that. I want to have a travel channel, I think. Summers are about the only time we can do that, but hey, I'm thankful for that. It gives us some opportunities. So meantime, I'll just build a flamingo. Pennsylvania is where the office is set. So that's got to be a bonus. I don't know if that was, that was on the brochure of like living in Pennsylvania where the office was filmed but you know for anything clay turtle says as pennsylvania myself i think i'd miss the different weather winter can suck but not as bad as it used to be yeah global warming i suppose kind of helps winters here we haven't gotten as much snow and it's not as cold as it used to be <laughs> eventually it'll be like uh tropical here right eventually i just lost like half my subscribers check this out we gotta we gotta swing you guys back in okay the, the head of this is interesting. I think I have a new piece coming on here. Or maybe not. Anybody recognize this here blaster? It's a flamingo head, actually. It's not a blaster. It's a flamingo head. You know, they always say the grass is greener on the other side, too. Maybe dreaming of living in Florida. There's probably people that live in Florida that dream of living in Pennsylvania. They're like, oh, it would be nice to see the fall. I would love to have it snow on Christmas. Summers be so pleasant and, and warm, but not unbearable. That is a good thing. It does give you variety, which as we talked about earlier, has been said to be the, the spice of life. So maybe you take things for granted when you get used to them and then you're just always like, oh, it's gonna be so much better. I'd be so much happier there. Maybe you wouldn't be any happier at all. Maybe the weather has no impact on such things. Maybe it's found within. That being said, walking outside when it's 70 degrees outside and you know it's snowing where you're from, it's definitely a mood lifter. I'm looking for a little uh, claw beak thing. Anybody see it? It's black, it's small. I can't find it at all. It's the black beak. Is it in the bag still? I have extras if I had to find one. There it is, it's right in front of you guys. Jeez Louise. Come on now. Give you guys one job to do, which is to help me find stuff. I'm kidding, of course. Oh my goodness, for myself. Oh my goodness, for myself. Look at this. That is so well done. Dang it, these Lego designers. They need to quit being so good. I just look at these things and I, I think about myself and I'm like, nope, that never would have thought of that. Never would have did that. <laughs> it makes you appreciate them, you know? You're just like, holy smokes, these guys are, are on the next level. I guess that's why they, they get paid and work for Lego. Just like Lego Masters, I watched that show. 
as, as we probably all do. And I'm just like, darn it. These people are so good at what they do. I would, I could never make it on there. I would though, maybe someday if we, Clark and I got a lot of practice in, maybe someday I'd love to go on as like a father son duo and try out for Lego masters with the Clark man. I feel like he could carry our team probably. And then I'll just be like the, the dad that comes along for the ride. <laughs> I'll be like, Clark, man, how do we build this? By then, he'll be a, a master builder. Let me show you my flamingo, guys. So freaking well done. Come on, Lego. This little side build has no right to be this good. This is like an afterthought in the build. There's no purpose in this. Other than making uh, the flamingo and a butterfly. <laughs> All these pink pieces are literally just here for that. Maybe it's to increase the price point. I don't know, but I think it's worth it. That'd be a great poly bag, wouldn't it? A $5 poly bag, I would be first in line to buy that bad boy. Look at his face. That camera's doing a good job, too. It's like, Greg, we're just going to forget about you. Like many of you wish you could, but can't. The Flamingo. He's standing on a little water piece there, too. I love it, dude. Who did it better, though? Lego or Lego with their animal builds? Crap, that's so good. Okay, well, we got that done. All that's left is a tree, my friends. I'm not building the tree. I made you suffer enough. So that's where we're going to wrap the build. I will chat for a few more minutes since we're going over time here. We're now 10 minutes over. I blame you. If you're watching the stream, it's all your fault. It's easy to blame other people. T Tiglin X, Tiglin X says, I'm from Florida. People move down after a summer and hurricane season, they move out. We left and moved the Pacific Northwest. Winter sucks, but the rest of the year is gorgeous and no AC needed. You're describing Pennsylvania. We don't have to worry about rain, though. So, here, yeah, take that. Yeah. Toy Adventure says, I love Florida, but I wouldn't live there. Too expensive. Yeah, what isn't expensive nowadays? That's true. I thought about maybe going to, like, West Virginia and buying a town. I could be the, the mayor. We have one law. Everyone needs to build Lego all the time. Wouldn't that be fun? There's this guy that I uh, that I watch on YouTube. He was doing like vlogs for a period of time. He doesn't do them anymore, like most most people that once had a channel and no longer have one. But he bought they they went to they lived in like Bellevue, Kentucky, which is just across the river from Cincinnati, Ohio. And I guess it's kind of like where the where like the the poorer side of town or whatever. And he went in. He had some money on hand, and he went and bought like four houses all beside each other. So like there's two houses on this block and then like you have a backyard where there's another house facing the opposite direction where there's a road. And he built, he bought like all these places and then like they live in one house, gave his kids next, the house next door. And then behind him, his, he, he let his parents live there. So their backyard is just like one continuous like stretch of like cool like garden area and like outdoor seating area and stuff that they share collectively kind of I guess uh, in some circles this would be called a commune <laughs> he bought like a commune uh, but he did it all like super cheap because this wasn't a favorable place to live and now his whole family has places to go and I just thought that was pretty cool but that's uh, that's Kentucky I don't know if I don't know if people are uh, fantasizing about living in Kentucky but he made himself do pretty well there I think so that's my thoughts on places to live, where to go. I think Mrs. Brickitect might be home, so I do have to go. I think we're going to be back tomorrow, though. What am I going to be working on? Remains to be seen. I'm trying to accomplish a little something each day. We might not be building every day. This is just sitting out. Uh, we might be doing some sorting. I know people love the sorting streams. I have like this whole thing here that needs sorted. I've got a whole bin under here. If you guys like sorting streams, this would keep us busy for a bit right here. You know, we could we could probably uh, make a few live streams out of this. That's just hiding under here, uh, kind of haunting me, but we'll get around to it. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along today on today's little journey. I'll make a YouTube short about this. In one minute or less, I'll tell you all about the giraffe and Lord Willen, maybe, if, maybe even the flamingo. So take care, have a glorious one, and we'll see you when I click this button. Well, ne tomorrow, next time. It'll be well after I click this button. We'll, we'll stop seeing you then. All right, bye.